But this project was not made on the lathe, but it was made for the lathe. And I bought a bunch of these little bottles uh, for reloading uh, to put, you know, oils in. So, you know, for my saw, uh, band, uh, not the band saw, the uh, table saw, uh, the bearings to oil the bearings. Uh, this just happens to have cutting oil. There's another uh, one of these that has my Waze oil. And, uh, you know, trying to find the right little can for oiling um, for the Waze oil is still a work in progress because the two that I ordered from the rainforest that were supposed to be red both came black. Nothing against black, but I didn't order a black can, so I, I wanted the red. But I saw a bunch of people, no, well, one guy in particular, my skills on the lathe, uh, to put it mildly, uh, and honestly suck at this point in my machining journey, you know, very minimal talent, uh, as I learn. And one guy in particular, I think his name is D's D E E Z been watching a lot of his videos over the last period of time. He made the coolest aluminum spill proof cutting brush oil container. So I can't even imagine how much the aluminum cost, the size of the thing, and uh, the number of trial and errors he had to do to make that thing. And it's absolutely stunning. It's a gorgeous piece of, uh, of machining. Just beautiful finish. Beautiful finish. And it's functional. It's, it, works, it, looks, it looks great and it works uh, from what he says great. And he, he shows it off. Well, I was trying to figure out... You know, this isn't the best thing, in my opinion, because one, I don't want to get near, you know, my, my work surface and the, and the spinning wheel. This doesn't have a long, you know, arm. I have to get pretty close. Don't like that. Um, so that's one thing. The other was um, I use these brushes. So I'll put some cutting oil on or, and then I'll brush and run around or whatnot. And, you know, in theory, I guess I could just spray this or uh, drip this with cutting oil. Maybe that's a better approach, but, uh, I decided to go and make a ghetto version of what D's had as a spill proof cutting oil container for my acid brushes. And, um, I had the grommets, in fact, uh, what did I, you know, compliments of uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, I was debating. Ooh, it's chilly and those hurt my fingers. I was debating on what size. And, you know, those were the three sizes. And part of my size debate was, you know, how easy to get the brush in and out. Okay, that's, that's super easy. That's uh, relatively easy. Um, this one, a little not as easy, but still, it'll, again, these are 20 cents, so, you know, do I care about the, the bristles? Not really, and if I twist, I'm, I'm in there, um, and when it's saturated with oil, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So, uh, and I can always make this hole bigger for a bigger size grommet, but part of my thought process was the bigger the grommet, um, so I'm not going to fill this up with cutting oil. You know, I'll have at most a quarter inch of cutting oil in here. There's just no reason to have a lot of cutting oil. Um, and when I start to get low, I'll fill it with more cutting oil. But there's no reason to have a bunch of cutting oil. That being said, by only having, you know, quarter to half inch of cutting oil, um, <laughs> if this tips... It will not be enough to fall out of the uh, the hole or where the grommet is. So essentially, this is a spill-proof version of uh, of what Mr. D's um, machined. And again, boy, if he sold those, I'd buy that in a heartbeat, uh, regardless of the cost. Just beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery, machinery, machining. And, you know, I've looked online, I thought, you know, that's got to be a real common thing for uh, people who uh, have lathes is, you know, what are they doing? And, you know, you can look at places like Little Machine Shop and they've got little 
plastic spill proof containers that I think are basically kids paint jars uh, that they're, you know, re remarketing as, uh, you know, put your brush in there and you've got your, uh, you've got your solution. You know, the other thing, I guess I could do that, uh, but then I'd have to deal with oil all over the place. So for me, and this was working really good until I started, <laughs> started videoing, uh, for me, this is, this is probably uh, sufficient. So I went to, uh, went to the store. Uh, this is just your standard, uh, I think this is a gravy mix can, and I wanted to find a can that was not too big, you know, I didn't want some big giant progresso soup can, uh, and I didn't want, you know, a little mini two ounce can, so uh, this was uh, some middle ground, and I was thinking about, oh, I could put a magnet on the back, and then I'll just put it on the bench, or near the lathe, and I thought, nah, because then it'll attract all the shavings and whatnot, and again, it's spill-proof because it will only have just enough, you know, to get the the bottom of the brush wet with uh, with cutting oil, and uh, that won't be enough to uh, to reach center. So uh, I will have, in effect, what I'm calling the ghetto one dollar spill-proof cutting oil container for my lathe. So uh, my my uh, I'll call it my ghetto project for uh, uh, for today. Uh, it took uh, more time emptying the can of uh, of gravy. I think this was the chicken gravy. Uh, it took more time emptying and the can of chicken gravy than it did anything else. And by anything else, I mean uh, this, the correct size hole, the grommet, uh, filing the hole, so it, you know wasn't super sharp. Because I used a step bit to uh, to drill the hole and uh, fit the grommet, uh, and then uh, strip the label, strip the glue, and uh, there I have it. Um, it took more time to empty the contents than to do everything else, um, and that was due to you know, gravy was a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. Because my approach was, I drilled a a, a reasonably small hole, much smaller than this. Uh, I did a pilot hole just to relieve the air pressure, and then I went in with a step bit to give me uh, not quite this size hole because I wanted to have the can clean and empty before I started making my uh, uh, final uh, cuttings and uh, assembling. Um, so I would fill it with hot water, shake it up, dump, and I had a strainer. Uh, I have these in the garage. Uh, I had a strainer catching all the the shavings, the metal shavings, so it didn't go into the uh, into the sink or anything. But uh, fill it with hot water, shake, 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 dump, rinse and repeat, literally rinse and repeat, uh, and then uh, dried it out with a towel and then let it sun dry uh, for hours on end and then uh, shot it with uh, um, compressed air just to make sure. And there's no smell of, uh, it smells like can. There's no smell of uh, chicken gravy, and uh, and obviously there's nothing on the brush. So I will now put cutting oil in this. And uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some cutting oil in this, and then I'm going to tip it just to uh, just to demonstrate that uh, I have got uh, a spill-proof container. So uh, back in a few. So love this stuff uh, way before I got my lathe. And uh, I will still keep this on the uh, the bench for the lathe, for you know whatever purposes. But uh, you know my uh, my process. Uh, and if I try and pour it that way, it's going to take forever. So I will use this particular funnel that I keep on the bench, and I will clean it out. Not that it matters because. Uh, there's no issue with the uh, cutting oil imperfections or sanitary cutting oil, I guess, is, is a non-issue, but I'll still clean this out a little bit just because, because it sits on a shelf and uh, the garage, the garage does get... Uh, dusty. All right, so that is 
what I would call clean enough. So we will put that, oh, look how nicely that fits. And uh, I don't know what it is about oil, but oil gets everywhere. And this is uh, more than half full. So we're going to see. Mm. Okay, so that's uh, probably a third of what was in there. This will go back on my shelf. That'll set off to the side to drain. Now, you can't see what's in here. But there is clearly plenty of liquid in there. Let's see if you can hear it. I'll shut up. Not sure if the camera picked that up. All right, so now let's see what happens when I spill it. All right, so now this is a relatively uh, dry brush. Um, and what I will do... So I had a brush that I was marking oil, but I'd mix this with uh, different things on the bench. So I'll leave this as my multi-oil brush. And uh, this will now be uh, my, uh, what I'll call my cutting oil. So I'll probably put something like blue tape on it so it designates it as cutting oil. Or maybe I'll put a label on it or whatever. But in any case, we're going in. All right, that's wet. We're good. All right. No spilly. Uh, if anything, uh, I've got oil from uh, just doing that back and forth. So there is my ghetto cutting oil, one dollar. Actually, it was a dollar twenty-five plus the twenty-cent brush. So we're at a dollar forty-five uh, plus my time. People always making issue. Oh, you you spent an hour doing that? That's worth four hundred dollars. Uh, hobby. I can't assign time to hobby. So. Uh, this, I think, and again, somebody will say, oh, it's leaking. Look on the top. It's leaking. We've got leakage. I will clean that off. And I will do that. Oh, the viscosity of cutting oil is awesome. I will do that again. So if anything, I think there's oil uh, stuck in the grommet from pulling the brush up uh, full of oil. Uh, but we've got what I would call a leak-proof cutting oil solution for the lathe. Uh, that is it for tonight. Take care, folks.